Hey traders, Parker here with another indicator. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. So every time I give out a free indicator that you'll be alerted by it. Today, I'm introducing the relative volume standard deviation and the signals that go along with it. Today, I'm looking at ICVX. It's one of the high flyers today, even though everything else is basically down. This is up and it's flying on good news. Something about... Um, some medical equipment, something I approved. So what you're going to get with this indicator is the volume standard deviations. This is all the different labels that are going to pop up within there. And they explain themselves. So this white bar right here would be bull deviation. Basically, volume is uh, pushed up two deviations. And this yellow one, bear deviation, like this one right here, volume was pushing down, uh, pushing up. Uh, two deviations to the selling side you got buying pressure uh, to the uh, two deviations selling pressure two deviations buying dot those are those little dots there up here when the stock makes a lower low and um, the range of the high dot high minus the close is less than the close minus the low while the stock is making a new low vice versa for the selling dot you have your pressure range and the pressure range is where you see these uh blue squares it's basically saying this this body i'm mean, not the body but the range between the high and low is lower than average but the volume on it is above average so it's just showing you this pressure uh pressure there and it's not giving you an indication where the pressure is uh, going to the top side or the bottom side it's just uh, alerting you that it's there the irregular bodies are these uh, these yellow dots right there or irregular range I should say are the range is above average but volume on it is lower than average and that's why you got this yellow dot for me it's a warning sign to saying that the move whether up or down is not validated by volume <clears throat> You have a high volume churn, and that's basically what you get with these squares right here. You can see how the volume on this uh, candle right here is high, but look at the body and compare it to the high and low range. And you can see it's just churning right there. And it's really a warning sign if you're at the top of a range to you may want to get out. Uh, but the, uh, the buyers and sellers are basically fighting on these churn bars. Nobody can push it up or down. It's basically just sitting there waiting for the battle to be over we have your low churn and that's where you get these uh yellow dots uh yeah right here for low churn basically these are churn bars the uh <clears throat> the body of the candle is lower than uh a certain percentage of the uh high low range and it has low volume so you can just see it's just churning and it's even though the stock is going down it actually came down to this gray line which is the average of, of the price and I have mine set for 12. You had two uh, deviations to the top, two deviations to the bottom. That's where you're getting this pink cloud from in these uh, triangles. So if price pushes above two deviations above, uh, pushes above two deviations above the average, that's where you get this cloud. It's just a warning. Hey, uh, price is pushing two deviations and it just helps you out with volatility. You get the same situation to the downside as well like this if price pushes two deviations to the downside you'll get the same situation there and right now you see right now you have a pressure range right here on this candle right here and this move is pushed up and it actually went away but you're getting the two deviations right there to the top side so <clears throat> that's the way the signals will work you get the uh, volume making a new high if you look right here this is your uh, volume highest volume for the average of I think it's 12 so 12 bars so anytime volume is making a new high up on average you get a uh you get a signal saying new volume volume new high bull and right now you're getting a selling pressure uh selling pressure two deviations to the downside so this right here you can look at right this is a, a area of pressure right now even though the stock is above two deviations right now you can see there's a lot of pushing down same situation, volume makes a new high and it's selling pressure. I mean, not selling pressure, but it's to the downside. So you have your triangles for buying pressure, two deviations, selling pressure, two deviations for your magenta. 
and I'm going to put the drawings back on there so you can see what's going on. <clears throat> I can get rid of this field, but you can see how it's coming up to its new, it's coming up to this uh, resistance level. And it kind of settled right there around 1250 and 1350. It kind of ranged between those two. But we go to a higher time frame. And I am going to get rid of fields because I had the fields going from right here. This high right here, but it broke above that high. So if I get rid of the fields, you can see where that new high is coming from. It's coming from this kind of well, this new area of resistance coming from here. There's your uh your labels as well over here. And you can see the same situation over here. These ranges are not really validated by volume because volume is so low. I have this set for a 21 period average. But you had all this pushing up from here from this area of a price being pushed down below two deviations. <clears throat> and now you can see it just pressed back up and it got back above the 21 period average. You can, uh, let's see, let's go back to the daily and see what's going on. I mean, the uh, intraday. And you can see it right here. So if you get churn bars at the top of a range, you probably want to get out of it or it's just indicating that it's a fight in that area. And if you get them at the bottom, it's the same situation. It's a fight in that area as well. You can see right here, this is pre-market and it's not a whole lot of volume going on, but you can see right here, you're getting a uh, high high volume high volume churn right here. You can see this area. The stock wasn't really able to go anywhere. It just basically ranged in this area until you got this bar right here, which is a uh, low volume and a low range. Low volume on a high range. So this range is above average. This high low range is above average, and the uh, volume on it is below average. Then you got this huge push up, but you got this area to just push right back down. You can see where this pressure was right here. And you had churning right here, more churning right here. And that's why I mean you get a churning uh, at one of the top of the ranges or a top of a, uh, in an uptrend. It could possibly mean the stock needs to pull back. And that's what you got right here. That orange square right there is just showing you, hey, it's, it's high volume churning. Same situation here, but you also got a blue dot is just, I mean, blue square is just telling you there's uh, pressure right here. This is a small, smaller than average range and on, on high volume. Same situation here, just move, complete move down. And right now we could be looking at a pullback, a uh, pullback to the, either the average or this next area, let me uh, duplicate that and let's see where are we, we're saying 1460, so we'll put one 1450. And it could pull back here. I didn't mark out the uh, the higher levels. Uh, I could mark those out. Let's see, uh, duplicate. So we will do 14 and do that so there's your 14 and it scooted up all the way up to 16 so we'll duplicate that one and we'll just put this at 15 and i'll stop doing stuff stop doing technical analysis now and just look at what's going on the stock was above two deviations you got a, a selling pressure arrow to the downside it it stopped on this uh, 15, 14, 15, half, half dollar mark. And now you're getting a low pressure, low, low volume churn right here on this candle, just like the, uh, the label is indicating right now. <clears throat> it's not telling you which direction. You have to decide that for yourself and whatever indicators that you actually pay with this. So if we come down here, wrong one. If we actually come down to the actual indicator. If you don't like volume, you can actually change this to tick volume as well to give you a, if you want to use tick volume. And it gives you a whole different uh, color scheme as well. Tick volume uh, is above uh, two deviations or one, devi uh, one deviation. So those are some of the features of the indicator. And I keep going to that one. And anything that you see in here is fully search scannable. So you can scan for any of this stuff by just going to Thinkorswim scan. And you can scan for anything that's in there. 
but preferably uh, preferably you want to uh, scan everything from the signals and what else did I want to just if you're unfamiliar with my volume uh, anything that's above two deviations and it's bullish it'll be white anything above two deviations it'll be yellow anything above one deviation and it's bullish it'll be bright green anything that's above two uh, one deviation and it's bearish it'll be bright red anything that's simply above average volume or, or above the mean volume it'll be light uh, light green or this light red or this pinkish uh, salmon color anything that's below the mean will be dark green or dark red so and if if it's uh below 70 percent of the vo uh, of the mean you'll get this right here and right now we're still dealing with low churn on this candle right here low volume turn so when you get in these churns like that you can really just expect the the stock just to range range in this area there's no direction for the buyers and sellers but it's sitting on this 1450 so obviously 1450 it looks like an area of support or area of interest i'll say so let's go what else uh same situation here any of these uh anything in here is fully scannable you can change the volume the same way tick volume i have this set on an average of 12. if you've been watching my videos and you know i use 12 on a 12 or 48 on a five minute chart because 12 gives 12 uh bars to give me an hour 48 bars give me four hours and it's all depends on whatever uh length of time that you're comfortable with but that's uh works pretty good for me so i changed this to 48 you're going to get a completely different uh um uh signals in there and a completely different volume of uh, volume set as well a uh, color scheme for the volume and you can see how everything changed so this is just uh, above the uh for 40 if you put this on four hours or 48 period uh, uh length that's all you're getting is above uh, two deviations of volume that's uh, in there. And one of the other features of this indicator is I have a set for buy sell pressure. And buy sell pressure is just saying uh, the, the trend type. If the range between the high minus the close is less than the close minus the low, then that's considered a uh, buying pressure and, and it'll just paint the uh, candle either uh, green or white or uh, whatever, just bullish colors. And if it's uh, bears, the range of the close minus, I mean, the high minus the close is greater than the range of the close minus the low. And that's where you get buying and selling pressure from. You can use close and this right, this uh, uh, colors account is according to closes. So if the close is greater than the preceding close, then it'll give you a trend like this. So this right here, whether the uh, whether the open is greater than the close or not, it won't. Uh, it doesn't matter if the close is greater than the preceding close. Then it'll give you uh, a trend of up uh, an uptrend. And let me switch this back down to twelve, and it'll probably show you a little bit better uh twin trend wise there we go <clears throat> and you can see right here this was a yellow candle but because this close is greater than the preceding close it's just going to show you a complete uptrend while this one right here this close was not greater than the pre uh, preceding close so it gave you a red candle so that's what I mean by it's a, a closed trend and it's just uh, taking a trending trend of the closes. Keep clicking on that. Oh, you can use Heikinashi and it'll give you the Heikinashi trend. If you're unfamiliar with Heikinashi, just go over to style and go to a uh, chart type and we can put on Heikinashi and basically you seeing everything. It just give you this trend of a Heikinashi candles, but uh, the signal indicator will always be buy sell pressure. It always be the buy sell pressure average, regardless of the uh, 
trend that you put in there. Uh, so we will go. Or the final one is just regular. So regular is <laughs> if the close is less than the open, that's what it's just going to give you. It's going to color price according to that. The close is uh, greater than the open, you'll be bullish. If the close is uh, less than the open, you can give you a red candle. And that's basically what regular means. As we can see now, you can actually see this is kind of breaking down, but it's doing it all on low volume. But this stock has been uh, halted a couple of times going to the upside. I haven't seen a halt to the downside yet. But right now, it's still haven't reached up to this uh, last resistance area. But it's going down on low volume. But it looks like it kind of sort of found support here at the uh, 14, uh, $14 level. So it's an even, even number of half dollars. You can look at those areas sometimes being areas of support resistance. And uh, let's see what it does for a second. So we can actually just step over here to the scan and you, we can we can look at what's going on. It's just all low volume, just pushing this down right now. You can see these low volume turns. So I would, um, to me, it would expect, I would expect another up move here in a, a little bit right now, <clears throat> possibly in this power hour, but you got a little time. So we can actually come over to the scan. I have some stuff that's already in there. I'm going just going to uh, get rid of those things and I'm going to go to my relative volume. Where is it? Well, we can just go there. There we go. The signals. And that's what I was really uh, looking for. So we look for buying pressure is true within one bar. <clears throat> and the criteria is just uh, it has had 3 million volume. I probably shouldn't put uh, 10%. I just do 1% uh, up to day uh, between a dollar and 50. So we'll just do a scan for that. <clears throat> then here's the stock we've been looking at ICVX, ITRM, IMV. Uh, right now, this is up 60%, 4%, and 17%. IMV. So we go back to the chart. Uh, I M V. <clears throat> and we'll come over here. You can see the uh, buying pressure that's on this stock as well. And one of the reasons why it's showing like that because I did not change the trend type that's in here. So inputs. I have a close greater than close. So what I should have done was change the buy pressure versus but just because that close is greater than the preceding close you can see right here there's a close that's why it's showing like that and it shouldn't have brought that one up so i see vx is the only one it brought up but uh also with this uh you'll get the uh the if a buy sell pressure, if, if one fires uh, within uh, you set, I have this set at 15 minutes and this is for on a daily if you want to see if any stocks. And so you can filter out your uh, your watch list right now. I have on buy sell pressure, but normally I would have it on close greater than the previous close. It's going to give me a, a stack of uh, in uh of uh stocks there any of these stocks are greater than their uh greater than their previous close and i filter them out from there here's our stock right here here's a fire long on g e t e r so i select that one and it's a complete waterfall but you got this uh buy sell pressure uh on on this thing and you have bull deviations, you have a buying dot. So this was a lower low and with buying pressure, volume new high, and you have a high volume churn. So what is it doing on the daily? <clears throat> oh no, I guess not the daily, but this is what happened uh, pre-market, but this is what's happening right now. So maybe around power hour, this stock might get a push up. But uh, one of the reasons why I created 
the relative volume standard deviation indicator because I was having an a issue with Thinkorswim and what was considering what was ultra high volume, ultra low volume, and uh, and relatively high volume, relatively low volume. So I just wanted the relative uh, standard uh, volume, uh, relative volume standard deviations is actually a indicator on uh, Thinkorswim. And it doesn't give you a lot of information, but uh, that's all it's gonna give you. So I took it, I took the concept and just brought it all the way over. And if I put it on 12, you can see where the volume was greater than two on different uh, stocks. Uh, what was the stock, IVC? So we'll go back to uh, this one right here. And you can see where volume was above two standard deviations. If you use 12, there you go. And you can see how this lines up perfectly. <clears throat> and I would have to recreate this and put a one. But for the most part, that's where I got the idea from. After looking at this and looking at a couple of videos on uh, using standard deviations, especially if you're using VWAP, and we can see the stock actually pushed above from this 14 right here. <clears throat> So, but it's, this is all low volume and you can always look at it as just ranging. But uh, let's go back to our list or our watch list. Any stock that's greater than, I was, I'm surprised the Tesla's on here, but it's showing you a seven. Uh, when you unpack this, uh, those uh, watch list sorter or just the sorter for the watch list, I put these numbers in here as a way of sorting it because it wouldn't sort it the way I want it to. So uh, this nine is just showing you it's the highest number and it is sorted accordingly. So anything with one or uh, two, anything like that, it'll be the, if you're looking for going short or anything like that, it is shorted accordingly. So let's go see what Tesla is doing. Tesla had a huge, huge push up. So from 153 all the way up to 60. And what is it doing on a daily? Not a whole lot of volume on a daily. If you're looking at it on a 21 day average. So this would be one of those low, but volume is greater than 70% of the mean though. That's the orange line this is the mean or the average. <clears throat> and volume is greater than that. But also Tesla is uh, on a 21 day average below uh, it's two deviations. Same situation here, it got below two deviations and it actually bounced below two deviations. It came back in, had a small bounce. Same situation, two deviations, then it bounced. Above two deviations, came down. and just rolled the average on here. But it's low, uh, even though it's on volume is greater than 70, and that's what you see in the watch list column, volume is greater than 70, that's why it's light green. Uh, the white is just showing you the uh, bull deviation, just like I show you on the volume, and you'll get a blue or a magenta as well when, uh, when volume sets a new high, but you can look right here. This is all just low volume. I wouldn't trust uh, what it's doing. What's it's doing right now? Even though you had this happen during the day, you can. I would. I would be really subjective of what's going on right now. Uh, Tesla is making a. Uh, I think is is it all new new lows. It is making new lows because it's lower than any of these lows back here. So that was a low. So it's actually possibly coming all the way back down here, uh, which aren't areas of strong support. But yeah, this was a big breakdown right here. But you can see all the signals throughout the uh, stock itself. If you don't like the signals I've chosen, just go change them. Uh, 
like I said, these all the labels are in there. I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to show you. Well, you can see these moves right here. Uh, this big move right here is on low volume. This move, low volume, low volume, low volume. The stock just range until you got this. Uh, you can almost look at this as being like a, a climax up bar. <clears throat> uh, I mean, buying climax where buying just stopped and sellers just took over. You can look at this bar right here being a selling climax where selling completely stopped and buyers just took over. Same situation here at this top, uh, buying climax and selling just uh, left out of there. <clears throat> and we're just looking at Tesla. So let's see something for a moment. I really mean to do this, but this was... So I'll take this low, connect it with this last high right here. And this is where Tesla is and possible coming down back down to this 151. Where are we? Did we already? Yep. Came right down there to that 110 or 150, 137. Is that what I stock it stopped at 150, 133. Alright, that's wild. <laughs> but the Fibonacci's work. So they worked out good on that one. That's why you got this bounce at pre-market. Or was that after hours? Uh, this is pre-market. It's 3 a.m. This is after hours right here. Hit the 110 field. Bounced above. And what else? I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to show you while I see how the video going. So let's take it apart for a second. In this bundle, what you're gonna get is the CW Parker twin, the signals, the volume standard, uh, relative volume standard deviations, and you'll get the two watch list columns. You get the uh, deviation volume, and you'll get the fire uh, pressure, fire pressure, and that's just showing you when uh, any any time you get one of those arrows. Uh, uh, these arrows right here, uh, buy, I mean, selling uh, volume deviation, it'll be a fire, and it'll show you red and uh, or buying uh, fire right there. So those will be your watch list columns, and you can see how all this moves right here, just relative volume. This is just low volume move, and it's just ranging. You can look at this part of the day because uh, this is one hour after everything opened up. And right now it's just ranging. It's uh, it's either lunchtime or past. It's lunchtime, so nothing's really going on right now except for the stock just ranging and churning. But Tesla was able to get above this 12 period uh, move average right here. This is a simple move average right there. So, well, it looks like that's gonna be the end of the video. <clears throat> If you haven't already, please like, subscribe. I just want to say thank you for listening to what I had to say. I hope this information has been helpful to you. Remember, it's, uh, it's for educational purposes. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just here sharing, uh, sharing with you some of my observations and some ideas. But uh, I can't move any stocks. I can't uh, give you any advice telling you to buy or sell any of these stocks or instruments. But these are just some of the observations that I've made and... Um, I, like I said, I hope this information has helped you, but it's for educational purposes and entertainment purposes only. And um, just look in the link in the description and that's where you'll find the action indicator or the, uh, yeah, find access to uh, get the indicator. And I just want to say thank you again for listening to what I had to say. And I hope for, that it was helpful and God bless you all and stay safe out there.